you for joining us, John. Oh, of course. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you having me here. Put my glasses on so I look a little smarter. That's, you definitely do. You look smart to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, tell me about the Phoenix real estate market. Um, right now, it seems to be just a hot market in general. Yeah, man. It's, it's, a, it's an awesome market. It's really, this is one of those times where it's really good for sellers and it's really good for buyers. There's the, in, the really great inventory leaves the market very quickly. So you have to pounce on it if you're a buyer. But the cool thing is that uh, for, from a buyer's perspective, w there's a lot of good inventory coming on the market. This flipping thing isn't a fad anymore. There are some really great contractors out there upgrading some of these homes that have been in sore need of that. And some of them dedicated to making the houses greener, um, installing solar, and really attracting that buyer who really has a desire to have, you know, a, a, a greener, uh, a greener footprint rather than want a house that just, uh, you know, sucks up energy needlessly. Excellent. Yeah. So the market's great here in Phoenix and sellers are doing really well, of course. And I, I see that continuing for some time. Eventually rates will go up, but when that happens, uh, people still need to have a place to live. And I think the market generally knows how to take care of itself. And right now here in Phoenix, everybody who wants to sell a home, as long as they're realistic, are able to move their home. And anybody who wants to buy a home, um, you know, as long as they're able to work with an agent who can help them quickly identify the properties that might work for them, they're in a great spot as well. Excellent. Well, it's, it's also one of the top uh, residential solar states and areas. Um, do, do you see just a growing market uh, and, and do you see it getting more popular? Uh, for people to, to install solar on their homes? Trying to. So what was the second question? The question is, um, we're still in, you know, there's, there's a, a solar boom in Phoenix also. Do you right. see a lot more homes, like you said, with solar panels on them? Do you see that, that homes are already hitting the market? Do you see people are interested in solar uh, as they want to buy a home? And just how, what do you see? You know, you know what? I see solar panels everywhere. Five years ago, not so much. Now, as you drive around Phoenix, you don't have to look very far to see solar panels. It used to be, you know, uh, only the tree huggers had, had solar panels. Now people who, um, who are, who are, people are becoming aware of the opportunity and they're not passing up on it. So it doesn't make sense not to have solar. So people are turning to it and getting it put on their homes. Right. You know, it, it, you think it's just because the, the efficiency of the panels have gone up and the price has gone down that it's just, it's too attractive to stop. Is that, is that what you see? Kind of I get, I'm going to guess that that has a lot to do with it. Right. It's, um, in, in, not very long ago, uh, the efficiency wasn't near what it is, but it's still, even though all that, you know how um, technology is, the computers we're using right now, they won't be very powerful in four years, but they work great right now. And it doesn't make sense to live right now because the technology is going to get better tomorrow. And I think people realize that too, as fast as this technology is moving, um, it doesn't make sense not to fix your energy costs if you can. Right. Now, otherwise, you're at the mercy of the energy companies, right? You, your, um, your, your power bill is going to go up if you don't take control. Right. Now, um, do, you find, do you find that you have difficulty with uh, lenders if someone wants to install solar on their home or do you do, are there special mortgages that you find, or do you tell people to get an equity loan on top or an equity line of credit on top of their mortgage? Yeah, you know, it, those are those are good questions. And financing is really a, always a big deal, right? So, here in Phoenix, there are a few lenders who have have uh, implemented programs that work with FHA buyers that are 
that really work perfectly for this. So I can take somebody to find a house as long as it's within FHA loan limits, and that's in the high twos here in Arizona. So, you know, if you're looking for something above 300,000, this probably won't work for you. But if you're looking for a starter home, just under $300,000, we can do that for you. And so we can identify the house um, and include the, 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 the installation of a solar package on the home right after close of escrow. Now, I always recommend when someone do that, they kind of take a holistic approach at the house, right? Because these older houses, while they may be a great opportunity for somebody to, um, to, to purchase, one of the things they weren't built for is efficiency. The newer homes are far more efficient. And probably the best dollars somebody can spend on a, on a, uh, on a, on a purchase of an older home is simple things that really go a long way to making that solar system a lot more efficient, like weather stripping, um, modern LED light bulbs, um, just making sure that uh, their their house <clears throat> their house isn't um, isn't making sure that the little things aren't being overlooked before you install. And what what's you know maybe an ex, a more expensive HVA system HVAC system or solar system these little things are pretty easy to take care of and so you know it, it, the the easiest way to identify those is to have an energy audit done you you're probably used to those over there too aren't you yes yeah a lot of, uh, a lot of places a lot of utilities will offer that. Um, and and yeah it's it's in here in the sacramento area we deal with a lot of um homes that are in you know uh built between the 50s and the 70s a lot of ramp style homes that are older that have been updated uh so i mean this is just like most of america a lot of homes were built in the 50s that are coming up for sale again for sure yeah so yeah, it's the nice thing is for <clears throat> for a lot of people is these mo these older homes can be real. They really have some nice elements that the new homes don't. They usually have bigger yards. Right. Um, a lot of people want an older home just because of that. I mean, instead of getting a yard the size of a patio, you can get a older house with a real yard and mature trees. That's really attractive to a lot of people. So while you put that solar system on there, that's a really great thing to do. It's really smart. It should be one of the first things you do, but right while you're doing that, you should, you know, in, make sure you have good weather stripping, make sure your light bulbs are LED. Um, you know, if your windows are, are losing, losing, um, are, are letting energy just kind of fly out the window because they're single pane or cheap double panes, upgrade, uh, upgrading your windows might make sense. It almost always makes sense to um, insulate your attic more thoroughly than originally that batting kind of like mats down after a while so blown in insulation usually likes makes a lot of sense and pays for itself and just sealing up around little things like light sockets and um, rece rece receptacles where you plug things in those little things cost almost nothing but they make your solar system so much more efficient and may even change the amount of solar panels that you need. So um, those are really well worth doing. So I always um, let my buyers know here, if they're considering um, solar for their home, I'll pay for the energy audit for them. So I'll pay for the energy audit. The, the utility companies will pay for the rest of it. So I'll shell out $100. Utility companies will pay for the rest of the audit. And then the guy will come out and put, do a big test on the house. And it's really a sophisticated test. And it tells you a lot. It tells you where your house is strong, where it's weak, and what you can do about it. So um, it's, it's really a great educational experience. All right. Well, now, what if, because a lot of these older homes, um, they have older roofs. So let's say you get a roof that has 10 years on it, but you have an older electrical panel. Um, it's, it's been updated. You have some good weather stripping, triple pane or double pane windows, things like that. You recommend that that person is that person who's still going to need a new roof 
um, is it still uh, make sense for them to get solar? Well, I think it makes sense for them to do the whole thing at once. You know, yeah. the, the and it, everybody's got a, a budget. Otherwise, we'd all be looking at $3 million houses. They just smell better. I don't know. They're more fun to look at. But if you're, you're uh, always attractive. Yeah, I mean, hey, why wouldn't we, right? But um, those houses that have those conditions that you just described, those underlying conditions should should be treated first. So it's kind of like I used to be in the, a, a paint contractor a million years ago, and it we always used to talk to people about uh, the paint that you put on your house is really only as good as what's underneath it. So if the surface underneath isn't stable, it doesn't matter how high quality the paint is on top, it's gonna flake off eventually. So the same thing is true of your solar. You don't wanna put your solar panels on top of a bad roof and you might as well upgrade your service system if you've got old fuses or um, a, an electric panel that's maybe only 100 amp box or something. You, you need to upgrade that. And I've got great resources for that stuff those are also things that can be handled with the uh, with with uh, various types of FHA loans. So that stuff can be financed. Don't let it stop you from buying the house. If you feel good about the house and the neighborhood and the payment where you'd be sitting, if you were to include those things in the financing, then I would recommend you do it. All right. Now, do you um, now do you, do you do you help find? installers for people or do you recommend them or do you just say look you should do this and here's some information and then you go i mean how, how involved do you get well i like to i like to be connected with vendors of all types that can be a resource to my clients because this is this is my business i'm in the i'm in the real estate business and i know everybody from the house painter to the roofer to the solar guy and everything in between. If you need an attorney, if you need a CPA, I like having those connections. So I share them with my clients all the time. So yeah, I have connections in the, in the solar side of the industry so that if somebody would like, you know, four or five choices of people to interview and even links to go to so that they can do their own research, however they want to go about it, I can be as little or as involved as they would like me to be. Typically, people like recommendations so i can certainly give them some people who have done good jobs for others in the past excellent and uh now i know you, you talked a little bit about finance companies um yes and you know it, it seems that here in california there's a few that are that are starting to include a, a solar mortgage and and um i mean what do you tell people who who are just saying that you know what, I think it's gonna be more expensive than what I already paid to my utility. You know, um, it, do you do, I mean, what do you say to them? I mean, well, it, it's, um, it's, it's kind of a, that's where the real discussion starts for those who are, who are looking, this, looking at this from a purely fiscal side. <clears throat> I think that once they sit down with somebody who's in the solar business, sells the panels, it's pretty easy to see that, you know, four or five years, you're gonna be, you're gonna be recapturing most of your investment. So if you're gonna, and, and at the same time, solar, uh, solar, um, solar pl these solar plants, that's what they really are. They're, they're energy plants that you, you have on your home instead of, getting it from the wire from the utility company, you have your own energy plant. So these, these solar plants that people invest in, they have value that is sustaining. I mean, they do, you know, as they become 20, 30 years old, the value has declined, but nonetheless, they, they hold value and they'll still be valuable four years from now. So, um, you know, there's an inherent value in installing these things on your house. And the cool thing is, like we said earlier, um, once you've paid for the thing, the price of the energy doesn't go up. The sun doesn't charge you more because it's five years later. Right. So once that thing is there, it's there for you to, to use and enjoy. And it, um, you know, that's, 
I think that's the thing that a lot of us are really attracted to. Here in Arizona, it, it's really easy to get a four or $500 electric bill in the summer in a modest home, you know, a couple thousand square feet. It's very easy to achieve. Most people don't like those bills. Sacramento is only about 10 degrees cooler, so we get hit too easily. Yeah. Um, it, it, now, when did you get interested in solar yourself? Really not that long ago. Yeah, I mean, uh, to, to, you know, to uh, be, to really con confess the, the truth, only about a year ago I started opening the door to that, and I really um, had the wrong view of the whole thing. I really, I got to say, I am not a total tree hugger yet, but I'm, I'm that close. I'm really getting close. I mean, I, I think that it's equally as important to uh, protect the planet as it is to save money with this stuff. And it's kind of fun to know that, hey, you know, when, once you're done putting a solar plant on your house, or once you've upgraded the insulation in your house, it's not like the power company where every minute of every day, energy is being pushed over to your house that is maybe produced from a coal burning plant. Maybe it's produced from, um, from, from, a, from a, uh, a, a plant that is powered by uranium. And, <clears throat> you know, those things aren't, aren't inherently bad, but they, they're much more, you know, uranium, um, you know, the, uh, the bad side about that is what do you do with all that stuff when the rods are exhausted? You, you, right now, you're, they just sit there at the power plant and they're encased in, in lead and concrete and you know the water that keeps those rods cool. I don't know what they do with that stuff when it's done, but it takes a lot of water to keep them cool. So <clears throat> this just makes a lot more sense to me from, from that perspective, from the carbon footprint perspective. So yeah, about a year. About a year I've been into this. What was your What was your moment that like that that was it slow or did you just did someone say something and you just a, a light switch? <laughs> yeah. Hey. No, good question. I think um, I think what happened to me is I was in a transaction with another agent here. Her name is Melissa Camp, and she you know people started calling her the Queen of Green, and she, Melissa is so cool. She um, she used to be a teacher, and and she loves the teaching process. And so now she teaches a series of classes on green energy. So I've taken a few, couple of those classes from, from her and they really just kind of opened my mind to the truth. Because I think we all create our own realities in our own minds and we kind of guard those. And I think that I really didn't want to embrace the um, alternative energy thing because I. I, I saw it as something other than what it really is. And the, the truth is, it's, it's really only good. It's people who have ideas, who want to, you know, find ways to create energy and use our resources in a more responsible way. So when you really think about it, what's, how could there be anything wrong with that at all? So yeah, I kind of started with those classes that I took through Melissa. And um, you know, it's just the more I read about it, the, which, which is almost daily, I'm, I'm digging into this stuff a lot because I think it matters and I think it's important. And I think, you know, everybody needs to be like California. You guys are, have implemented this law where, you know, after, what is it, 2025, all the, home, all the new builds have to, have to have solar on their home. That's how it should be everywhere. It's after 2020 and- uh, 2020. It's, come, it's right around the corner. Yeah. Um, they've already done the math on it. They said that it, it, would, it would add, I think, $20 a month to a mortgage, but save 40 bucks a month in power costs. So, Hey, that's good business. That is good business. And, and that's, that's how much it's going to save right now before, you know, who, God knows what power is going to cost 10 years from now. That's right. That's right. So at this day and time, $20, a buck will get you two. I'll take that deal all day long. Absolutely. I think so if all you care about is the money, it still makes sense. Absolutely. 
I, I think that 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 this biz, that solar because it's scalable because it can you know you can't put a I, I love wind power too but you can't put a windmill that's going to do you know right now today uh, in every house solar no. you can put it on every house you can put it on condos townhomes they have they have windows that that are now solar voltaic and and that's going to hit the market before we know it you know it's, oh that's really exciting I, i've been reading about that a little bit too and and i've been uh, in some conversation with some friends of mine who are in the window business so there's a lot of antician anticipation and you're right about the wind um the wind thing it, it's coming along but at this time most of the decent wind powered systems require really they really want you to have that thing 65 feet in the air and right. that's ways up there man that's like two flagpoles that's way up there so uh that's kind of looked a little freaky i mean you could do that out in an urban area where you know it's, or in an area where you know you're you've got cows and horses and 15 right. acres but in the city i don't i don't think it's gonna look right i think solar is just more scalable and i think that's I, I think people can talk about it from a um, climate change point of view on either side of, 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 of the spectrum all they want. And I still think the market is going to adapt and people in 10 years are just going to have solar everywhere. That's what I think. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but I just see that it's too practical not to. Well, I think you're right. <clears throat> you know, for one thing, um, wind is wind comes and goes a lot more than the sun we know the sun is going to rock rise every day and in a place like arizona more than we get what 300 days a year of sunshine so it's just a complete no-brainer so it's it's um you know we can we can uh, even when there's some clouds that we can get power from the from the sun on most days in a, in a solar panel do you think um do you think that the do you see that the rest of the uh, the real estate community is starting to warm to solar, or is it something that they, it's, is it even on their radar? Well, I think I think most of us know that it's it's um, it's it's here to stay, and we're learning how to deal with it. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of us agents, like myself, were really new to discovering it, and the little things like. Um, how do you account for the value of a system? Uh, for example, a lot of appraisers aren't certified to assess a solar system. So um, this is one of the things Melissa, Melissa points out in her class very thoroughly is that, um, you know, when it's time to assess the value of your home and figure out what it's, what it's worth, if you've got a solar system on it, it that it's really critical that you be working with an appraiser who's certified in assessing the value of a solar system because you know you can't just compare it to some other house that had a solar system too if it's a different manufacturer if it's different age if it hasn't been maintained as well there's a lot to it that's right that's right well um i just wanted to say thank you for joining us today yeah and, and uh Everyone out there, uh, thank you for joining us on the HaHa ha Smart Solar Podcast. Uh, go to HaHaSmart.com, sign up, and you can have local installers uh, call you up and they can help you uh, find a great system for yourself. And, and uh, so thank you. Hey, Jason, thanks for having me. And any, anybody out there here in the, uh, in the Phoenix market who has interest in, in solar for their house, you can reach out to me and I'll help connect you with people in the industry. And if you're thinking about selling a home that has solar on it, or if you're thinking about buying a home and putting solar on it or buying one with an existing system, any of that stuff, I'd love to help you work your way through that process. It'll be well worth it. And together, I think that, um, you know, we can help you find the right home and make the planet a little bit greener. So why not? I'm John Cunningham with Phoenix Real Estate and homes.com and exp realty and you can reach me at the at the number below which is 480-442-3501 all right and uh um 
one more thing. How can they, if they want to reach you on Facebook? Oh, John, John Cunningham, EXP Realty. Just look that up. You'll see me. All right. Thanks so much. And uh, thanks again for having me and have a great day. Okay. All right, Jason. All right. Thanks a lot.